Dog Gadgets. Live! Why, hello, it's Brown Dog Gadgets. Hello. Live. Hi, I'm Josh from browndoggadgets.com. And over here to my right is the, as always, wonderful Pete. Hey, hey, I'm over here. <laughs> All right. Uh, Pete's really using those overlays today. <laughs> uh, today's episode brought to you by regular Dr. Pepper. Apparently not working well with the green screen. <laughs> um, with sugar. It's kind of greenish. Uh, it's afternoon, and I am tired. So, Dr. Pepper. But actually, today, the real focus of our thing today are solar panels. They're cool. Solar panels. Um, now, we're, we're going to show you how to do uh, some paper circus projects with a standard off-the-shelf little tiny solar cell you might get off Amazon, eBay, or our website, for instance. Um, or if you want to take apart some old garden lights, that's another good way of getting these as well. I'm going to show you a couple of tips and tricks to do paper circuits projects with these and just how you can use them easily in the classroom. A simple, easy way without doing soldering or yeah. breadboarding or other really annoying things. But there's a couple of little tips and tricks you want to do for this um, that makes it really easy that just works for younger kids. Uh, first and foremost, we have a couple uh, lesson plans and directions for these on our website at browndoggadgets.com. To do if you. <laughs> Uh, if you like the stuff you see, you might want to follow us on a social media account because we live stream like several times a, uh, a week. Uh, we'll be doing a whole bunch more educational things as the summer goes on into this fall when teachers are probably either stuck at home or stuck not at fun teaching conferences. <laughs> uh, so you can enjoy wonderful workshops and things from the, the pleasure of your own couch. Josh, did you say no soldering? Oh, yes, right. That no can only mean one be thing. Maker uh, tape, which is our awesome nylon conductive fabric. Tape instead of copper foil, you use nylon conductive or maker tape. It works really, really, really well for stuff like this because right. of its durability. Yeah. But we're going to jump into solar panels and fun things. So we're going to go to the overhead camera. Overhead. Well, I have a nice swig of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Is it caffeine free? It's got caffeine. Why, 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 would, you, why would you do that? <laughs> it's like people who drink decaf oh, coffee. No. It's like, I enjoy coffee. Just a taste of coffee. Some like, people do. do. Do you? I mostly, I don't drink any caffeine. Some people enjoy being kicked. I, I mean, well, I, I don't no, get it. I don't know who. Um, I'm sure there's somebody out there. There's somebody for everybody. I've learned, I've learned that I, as well. I guess. Yeah. But solar panels. Mm. So this is a, a couple of solar panels here we just had out of our warehouse. Uh, we're using some of these, actually, these little guys for five, six years. You can find similar ones. This is a little six-volt solar panel, about six-volt, 80 milliamp. So not a lot. You can get like a small DC vibrating motor to go or an LED or two to go off of that because 80 milliamp isn't very much. And that's the open circuit rating. Oh. Open circuit is with nothing else attached to it. Once you throw other things into the system, the voltage um, drops overall in the I in think the they call that no load versus ah, load. Yes. Yeah. So if you actually go to Amazon, look at like a big solar panel, they have load versus no load, open mm. circuit versus closed circuit. There's two ratings like, wait a second, what's going on? There's a reason. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and this little 2-volt, uh, 40 milliamp solar cell, which we use in a couple projects as well, such as our solar cockroach and our solar bug, which, oh. by the way, this afternoon, if I had gotten stuff done ahead of time, uh, this would be a new version of this kit would be up on our website. And this is just a little vibrating motor attached to the back of here, and it's direct sunlight to uh, vibrational motion. Sunlight to, well, ah, sunlight to electromagnetic, because yeah. it's a motor to motion. Yay. Everything's about trans... Transferring motion or energy from one thing to another, right? Energy conversion. Energy. It's one of my favorite units go. when teaching middle school, yeah. by the way. Oh, by the way, if there's anybody out there watching, say hi. We always like it when people say, hey, you guys, you're not horrible people. Yeah. Or, hey, that's a cool bug you made. Or, hey, I'm a teacher. Send yeah. me something. We, we, we do this because because we like reaching out to people. But yeah, this is a new version of the project. We've had a, an older version of this a while ago that used wood. But same approach, vibrating motor, yeah. solar panel moves along, kind of like a, a solar panel bristle bot or solar powered bristle bot. Uh, but solar panels are really, really easy to use. They're, especially stuff like this, they'll cost you $5 or less per panel. If you can get them with wires attached, mm -hmm. um, that's always a good option, no matter who you get them from. Don't pay more than $5 for like a no. little solar panel, no. Uh, no matter who you get it from, because I've seen people mark things up really high for little tiny panels. If you need a ton of them and you're willing to wait a while, eBay. EBay, go yeah. to eBay and just buy like a bunch of like solar bunch. panels. You can even buy um, for the longest time like the solar wafers from like bigger panels. Oh, yeah. um, 
that have broken, like a bucket of broken wafers. Um, and you can always hook them together to make yeah. a bigger panel. Because why not? That's what they're doing in here anyway, hooking little tiny slivers of those together yeah. to make a certain voltage and amperage output. Gosh, we're getting our first comments whoa, 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 whoa. Now, this this guy, I thought it was Maker Block, but it says JS, so I don't know. He says, hey, guys. And then he wanted us to know that his kid really liked the Porg sweater. Uh, it, well, thank you. Project you the Porg, there. wonderful Porg um, Christmas shirt. Uh, was a project that's up on our website, browndoggadgets.com. Yeah. It's a pretty easy um, thing to do. That's with our crazy circuit stuff for mm -hmm. conductive sewing. If you have someone in your house looking to do sewing, that's a good activity to do to make a light-up shirt. It's like maybe 10 bucks worth of stuff plus the Porg shirt. And when you're done, if you really hate it, you can always take those cards <laughs> off again. As I jokingly say, whenever we do conductive sewing things, we hate it. Just take it's, the stuff off when you're removable. done. It's removable. You'll kill you the shirt. You can revert. But... You can revert. You can undo. But the pork shirt was a fun one because we want to do some holiday right. stuff. But back to solar panels. All right. So anyway, 6 volt, 2 volt. Your standard LED is anywhere from like 2 volts, like this red LED, up to like 3.5 volts. Your standard little like vibrating motor that you might find in, say, like right here, this little self-sticking motor we have on this old Dixie Cup guy or one of our bristle bots, those run off like a volt and a half of power. So like a little two volt will do fine. But keep in mind, here's the biggest thing I always tell people. Without a battery source in the middle, something you're charging up, um, not one of these, but like a AA or AAA, you'll be going directly from sunlight to electrical energy. Meaning that since we're inside or we walk into a shadow or somebody walks and a shadow goes in front of our solar panel, things turn off. So there's no mm. power storage. And right. Uh, back when I was doing stuff ages ago, like 10 years ago as a teacher, I'm like, well, can I put like a capacitor in there? Wouldn't that be enough? No. No. You have to use like a big super capacitor, like a really big capacitor that's going to cost you as much as the panel is going to be, to be honest. Or use some AA or AAA rechargeable batteries would work well. But depending on the project you're doing, that may be you know, more like overkill. Uh, but this is a nice way of doing direct from one to the other. So we're going to go over a couple little solar panel know-how things and then make a simple circuit and show you how that works. So this is your panel. Yeah, we're going to actually go to our close-up camera now that's back close from uh, being borrowed. Up. Close-up camera. Doo -doo. There it is. is it in focus? Yeah, it's it like is in focus. I, I focused Take it earlier. That. I know. Right? Uh, so this is a little 2-volt solar cell. Like Much like a big solar panel, you can see there's little tiny individual um, strips in here. Mm. And a big panel will have large, um, like I always call them graham cracker sized, because they have the, the structural integrity and the size of a graham cracker. But these are hooked together. <laughs> And then to get your uh, desired voltage and amperage rating. These are probably, I would imagine, since these are hooked up in a series, ah, each of these is probably half a volt oh, yeah. at 40 milliamp. So positive, negative, positive, negative. Um, you can see on here the way they're hooked together. It's probably, yeah, each of these is half a volt, mm -hmm. which makes sense. Uh, and, and compare that to our 6 volt, where we got a whole lot more little strips here. And these are probably... We got a bunch. I didn't count these up ahead of time. Uh, but there's a bunch of them here, and they're all connected on the back side. This is just a, it's actually a circuit board. These are always on like a little circuit board. Um, but they're all hooked together the same way to get you this 6 volt 80. And yeah. yeah. And so then we're going to flip to the back side. Yeah. And this is where it always throws people off. It does. So these little solar panels always look like this. Whether you take apart a garden light or you buy something off of Amazon, typically they look a lot like this. And this is perfect. Because if you want to, um, you want to solder onto these guys. Easy peasy, just solder positive and negative onto here. Mm -hmm. This is pretty thin copper. So if you do end up soldering on wires, uh, or you can get some with wires soldered on, throw a little hot glue um, uh, over the top of that to give some strain relief. Because yeah. I've seen people rip these off, <laughs> or they overheat them, and it kind of kills that little copper pad. Uh, but there's another spot, too, you can solder if you destroy those. It's actually on the edge here. And... A lot of the panels will have this little tiny strip of uh, fabric tape over here, but our little tiny two volts don't. Hidden here is the connection between the front and the back of the circuit board. So you see there's a little copper pads here, and back here these silver dots. That's where it goes from the back side to the front side. It's your through-hole connection. Yeah. Uh, you see these little tiny like little tabs. That's probably the uh, same tabs coming in from, yeah, from right yeah. here, the silver there. And if you peel back our 6 volt, you'll get the same thing on the edges here. Now, this is important for paper circuits for a reason. Because these little guys here, you can't just hook up our maker tape to, which you think you would because our maker tape is awesome. It's conductive on top and bottom. Just run it over. You can't because these are actually covered by a little thin layer of enamel uh, yeah. to protect it from corrosion. And I, I learned this trying it out uh, a little while ago. Like, oh, why isn't the, the tape working? 
Well, you have to either, one, solder something to there because the solder will destroy the enamel and allow yeah. you to connect with the copper. Or take a penny and scrape it off. In fact, you can scrape off any spot along here and solder to it. Um, I learned that one when someone destroyed something at, a, at an event we were doing. Here's a nickel or a dime. Would that work? Uh, yeah, a uh, nickel or a dime would work. Any, okay. any metal thing to scrape away. Okay. Uh, but it's just easier to solder to these points here and yeah. here. And that's where we're going to be hooking up our um, our, con our our tape to. Tape. Our, tape. our maker the, tape. Hold maker on. tape. Maker tape. Maker tape. And this is easy to run some tape to this spot or put a yeah. tape loop on these and then stick it down to a project. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's really, really, really easy to use, especially like the two volts. Yeah. with a red LED or a motor for projects. You just put a little tape loop here and here and stick it to the to your paper. You're, you're good. That's it. No more difference than you would a battery. Yeah. Uh, or if you want to make a bigger circuit, like with this, you could, say, run wires from here and then just tape the wires down, too. Yeah. Um, and I, in general, if you have bigger panels like this size, uh, get, get some wires attached. Even on our website, there's an option to, like, we will add wires to a solar panel. Mm -hmm. uh, Felix in our warehouse will has a big... Uh, box full of like wire soldered to solar panels uh for that reason but just it makes life easier for kids projects um but these guys are, are a little easier to deal with so let's switch back to our overhead camera overhead. Pete. now Yay. i have a question real quick on solar oh so solar it's a hot sunny day out there today in wisconsin very rare um so if we go outside we, we'd be able to have our solar panel do its thing right yes and that's now, what about in the dead of winter? Yes. In January, it's still super cold out, but it's sunny out. Is it still okay? Mm -hmm. So this was actually a part of the lesson plan that I used to do ages ago in my classroom, um, where we'd have the kids test out different light sources with solar panels mm -hmm. to see what had the best solar energy generation. The sun, of course, obviously being the right answer, but we'd often do it in the winter because in Wisconsin, winter is very clear. There's not a cloud mm -hmm. in the sky. It's sunny, but cold. Whereas summertime, we're getting 50-50 where it's overcast or cloudy, yeah. which even a little bit of overcastness on these guys will just kill the power output. That's the number one complaint we have about like our solar cockroach or old solar bug was that it's not working. What's going on outside? Like, well, is it a bright, clear, sunny day? Even a little bit of overcastness, haziness would be enough to just not make the circuit mm. work. Uh, so make sure it's a bright and sunny day, whether it's winter or summer. Uh, and actually, Ben, our, our, our video dude and resident like green energy guy who comes by a lot, uh, Ben has a big solar array on his garage here in Wisconsin, and his best producing days are in the middle of winter. Yeah. Even though they're shorter days, they're clear, right. just super clear, great power generation. So never let anybody tell you, like, oh, upper Midwest, you can't generate solar power. You have winter. Winter's the best time. Take, take that. Germany generates actually like ah. some of the best solar energy in the world consistently, and they're yeah. in the same climate zone as say wisconsin is upper midwest south dakota though no, not south dakota they're horrible they're no south ja dakota. and josh you know it's funny because you're going to use solar power for the for the make the bug move around i think ben uses the solar power in his garage to make his car move it's around. true he, he gets his his uh <laughs> volt i guess it's got a chevy volt now volt? All right. yeah um that's what he drove over today uh right. and he plugs in and powers his car and his yeah. uh like electric lawnmower and his home from this nice little panel array uh, on his home and so it is, it is a useful thing to do and it's an easy topic for kids to understand and use mm -hmm. because it's simple and it's low voltage yeah. and there's an immediate output immediate result from doing projects buy an old garden light or go to the dollar tree and buy garden lights great way to get some little solar things to look at and take apart because it's a dollar um, if you can get the ones with panels that look like this not the clear ones that look like calculator uh, panels those are glass and really tough to take apart mm. you want ones that have this kind of uh, black backing to them that like little circuit boardy but for a buck it doesn't hurt to try or just find some on craigslist or spend four dollars at home depot but is it is it resin over the top what is yes it, it is it, it, you're it right is it okay. is a resin i know because yeah, I, I had so. a bigger a bigger panel a five yeah. watt panel years ago that i dropped on cement <laughs> at, a, at a maker fair yeah. and it just shattered across the Ooh. front Wow. The panel worked actually just fine, Yeah, but it was just a bigger version of this. And gotcha. the epoxy is nice because it handles a lot of abuse. I can... Yeah. I can... Whoa. No harm, no foul. Somebody's going to end up with this in a kit one day. <laughs> uh, maybe. Probably me. Uh, yeah. But uh, th they're easy to use, and they have this nice circuit board backing versus the bigger panels you might see on a rooftop. It's got a lot of wafers in it with a glass yeah. front, and each of those wafers is very fragile. And if you can, I, I, I did ages ago, I think we still have them somewhere in the warehouse, buy a box of like wafers that are about this size, just a, a box full. It's a big styrofoam box, but you could hook them together to make a 
small panel of your own. Yeah. Um, by going, you know, same way, positive, negative, positive, negative in series. Um, I would not recommend doing that on paper with, no. with these guys here with this little panel. I tried that; didn't work out great. Um, you, somebody probably could give it a whirl and get it to work, but mm -hmm. I stick with keeping it simple for kids. But we're gonna make a circuit right now. We're gonna show you something you do. Uh, I'm using I'm gonna use a blinking red LED, which won't do anything for me because we're inside, not outside. <laughs> and I like the blinking red LED because it has uh, it's doing something, so you yeah. can see it's working. Because outside sunlight might wash out the LED, but if it's a blinking LED. Uh, you can definitely see something's happening with it or using a vibrating motor like in the solar bug kit, which will soon be for sale on our website in about an hour when I finally hit post because I forgot to. There you go. Um, but yeah, there's a, uh, the vibration is great because there's an instant action. Turn towards yeah. the sun, vibrate, turn away from the sun, stops. Instant action, reaction. Haptic that. feedback, I think they call Haptic it. Haptic feedback. You want to get really fun? Get a little bit bigger panel like that and get yourself a mechanical buzzer. They're like three yeah. to five dollars on Amazon. They make a nice loud like the joy buzzer sound effect and they move a lot. It's mecha it's a big mechanical buzzer. Um, you know what you do with that? You 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 hook it up and then you wait till nighttime and you go hide it in your neighbor's yard. And then when the sun comes up, they're like, What's that noise? And then they're have to look around for it. It's like a solar powered Annoyotron. Uh, I may have taken a, a blinking red LED and a battery taped them together and stuck into the ceiling of a teacher's room who I didn't Ooh. like at my school. I, t I taught at. I was a teacher. <laughs> so that teacher next to me. And uh, it caused a couple of janitors to get really, wow. really worried that there was something like wrong <laughs> with the ceiling. She never teacher. saw it. The janitor's like, like something was blinking up there. Teacher like, you never saw it. It's so it. weird. Maybe the kids like installed some weird device. I'm like, wow. LED with a battery. Come on, people. Um, I'm not a teacher anymore. Janitor, if, you, if that was you, leave a comment. We've got another comment here. Oh yeah, make it says don't don't live near me. He doesn't want to be my neighbor. My neighbors are wonderful, and I'm wonderful too. So it's I wouldn't true. I wouldn't do that. I just wait. Pete just plays loud punk music from the from the early and, '90s. And, and Dana plays 80s. the banjo, so you know. It's true. Her it's and Steve great. Martin playing the banjo all the time. <laughs> Fun factoid: Steve Martin, banjo player extraordinaire. Amazing. Yeah, he's one of a well-known banjo player. He does. I think a banjo contest he runs every year. Really. Anyway, so now, Josh, one question here. Oh my gosh. I know. I'm sorry. We're Dang trying it. to learn things here. So. People. I've had a uh, this guy came up to me. He's a little strange, and he's like, "I want to talk to you about free energy." Now, this is free energy, right? Solar. Well, once you once you energy, uh, once right? you pay for it, it's <laughs> uh, it's fairly free. Um, it, it is. Uh, I think solar these days has like a five year payback period. Yeah. In most places, especially with rebates, mm -hmm. um, and each state varies in what it does. Depends on what you're using it for. But especially if you have a home that has, say, electric heating or electric stove. Yeah. Um, I'm just running your refrigerator off of that, um, and your AC can really help cut down that bill. I know Ben um, tends to get a credit back from our local energy utility uh, for his small garage-based setup. It's not a huge setup, um, but he tends to get uh, yeah a credit most months from yeah uh, the energy company. My next-door neighbors, I, I have a very nice panel set up on their rooftop, um, and just like, yeah, that's bigger than Ben, so I have to imagine they're probably <laughs> generating – uh, most of their energy needs off it. I just have to make sure you have a spot that gets consistent sun south facing. Um, you, f you follow all the local permits and necessary restrictions and whatnot. But if you want to get really crazy, I remember five, six years ago, old, old, old timey story here. <laughs> uh, eight, eight years ago, I was doing a lot of solar stuff with brown dog gadgets. Um, I came across a guy in Australia. He lives in the outback. He's, he's a farmer in like a homestead type situation, like in the middle of nowhere. And, like, every summer, he builds a new panel. He, he buys the cheap, like, um, the grade B wafers. Like, they come in a, in a brick of wax for transportation. Wow. You, have to, you put them into a boiling pot of water to melt the wax. Wow. Uh, but they're, like, grade B. So they're just colors. There's, like, a chip on the side. You know, maybe they're, like, 98% as good as they should be. Yeah. But they can't sell them. So he'll buy these really cheap. And he'll sit there and he'll solder all the little connections together from these wafer to wafer to wafer to wafer with um, – this basically almost like aluminum tape type material. And he builds one every summer with a goal of generating way more power than they need so, so that if anything happens that uh, gotcha. they have all this energy. And that was just like his summer project. The hardest part, though, was the enclosure with a piece of tempered glass over the front. Oh, uh, yeah. But the nice blanks, he had a lot of – he just put on his rooftop. He didn't have to mount it somewhere. He just literally had like these sitting in like the backyard on stands oh, because okay. he had tons yeah, of land. Wrong. yeah. And uh, there's a guy in Milwaukee I met who did the same thing, PVC um, uh, setups in his backyard, because then he didn't have to have permits for it. It was a pretty uh, homemade setup, because yeah. he's just running power through a window into his home. I'm like, 
That yeah. might not be cool with the no. uh, the city for permits and electrical. It's whatnot. Milwaukee, probably fine. But they can also move it around his backyard <laughs> as well. Yeah. Uh, and they're heavy enough that it would take a really, really, really strong wind or storm to really knock them yeah. over because the panels with glass. Another easy way, by the way, all the solar information because we've been doing solar for years. You want to buy some nice finished panels that are pretty cheap. Watch Craigslist and eBay and other local Facebook <laughs> listings. Every now and then there'll be a solar installation, like a big industrial one, and they'll yeah. overbuy panels. They figure a certain number will be broken, um, but they always have extra. Right. And you can usually get them like half cost. Um and there's nothing wrong with them. They're just uh, better than full price. Overstocked. So, Josh, you know, um, I called Ben one day and I said, hey, Ben, is your refrigerator running? And then he spent 30 minutes explaining to me his solar setup to power his refrigerator. So I uh, I never got to say, you know, you, you better catch it. That, that sounds about right for Ben. <laughs> ben is Mr. Green Energy. He yes. built electric motorcycles, electric cars. So I'm going to build my circuit here. And by the way, this diagram, which we're finally getting to now after all this uh, <laughs> chit-chat, uh, we have a template for this on our website along with a little bit of information on LessonPlanBrownDogGadgets.com. And uh, you can also, if you want to go even further than this, you can actually uh, use some different directions we have with a transistor to make mm -hmm. use this as a light detecting uh, part of your circuit, Yeah. Um, which is exactly how an outdoor garden light works. It uses the solar panel and a transistor to turn a gate on and off. Either power flows the battery from the solar panel, or the gate flips the other way. Power flows from the battery to the LED. Yeah, it's really simple and easy. I love opening up garden lights because there's nothing to them. A cruddy, cruddy AAA battery from China, really cruddy. Uh, <laughs> like it is just like a third the power. Not even if that. Like usually three or four hundred milliamps instead of the eighteen hundred oh. you get from a commercial one. So, yeah, it's it's a lot less. So make or take. Nylon. So yeah. we're going to do this. We're just going to say we got about to that, um, about right here. Yeah, so we're just going to go from from here. I'm going to do a really bad job. <laughs> so this is, knowing that this is positive over there. Is that positive? That is positive. Positive on this side, so flip it over. Positive yeah. is here. We're going to come down, and we're just going to go over the top of our what, of Why our is one of the legs leg. bent on that LED? I do What's that happening? so I remember which one's positive and oh, which one's negative when idea. I put the LED on the table. Because cause one's longer, but once you spread them, yeah. the, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. Hard to now, tell we have it. a diagram, which we didn't print off ahead of time. The <laughs> diagram is really helpful so you know with spacing on stuff. Otherwise, you need to space things out kind of accordingly. We'll grab another one here. So we'll just go, yeah, well, whatever. It's close enough. As long as they're not touching in the middle, you're good. Right, right, right. Because we're going to put a little uh, tape loop on the back of tape. our solar cell so that we can then connect our solar cell to our maker tape because our maker tape is conductive on top and bottom, which makes life really, really, really easy for situations like this. Now, I'm yeah. just going to be really lazy and just go straight down like so over the top of here. Ta-da. Now I have a good, strong connect electric connection here and here. Hold on. Where's your resistor? Ah, see, that's a good point. Now, in theory, well, in good <laughs> practice, not even good theory, uh, in good practice, you'd want to have a resistor in this setup. This way, you're protecting uh, this LED from higher voltages. But since this LED is like a 2.3 volt LED, and this is a 2 volt solar cell, we're we're under power, and yeah. in most situations, for battery sources like these, power sources, yeah. you can get away without using one. Yeah. Or if you're using one of our big jumbo LEDs, um, mm -hmm. like the ones we have in our kits, these have uh, built-in resistors built on in. them. Yeah. Um, but in most small situations with LEDs and like a three volt, especially coin cell power supply, mm -hmm. you're fine. When you're using AA and AAA, then you really want to watch out because they have a lot more kick behind them, yeah. a lot more chemical energy. Um, yay chemicals. So we're going to take, uh, another strip of maker tape like so to do make a little ball. I, uh, loop is probably a better way of putting it. We're going to make a loop loop not like the loop that you look through that magnifies things that's a different kind mm -hmm. of loop it's the french spelling i believe la loop yeah uh, and we're gonna put on the back of our solar panel above that little oh, silver spot yeah. there on both sides i'm gonna do it again on the other side there and that will make a, a decently strong electrical connection mm -hmm. um you may want to press down a bit on everything just to make sure and this is what we do with uh how we attach the vibrating motor to the back of of 
the solar panels on our solar bug and solar cockroach kits is with a little piece of maker tape to that silver spot and that works just fine uh as long as you have enough power which we don't because yeah. we are under artificial lights now could you use a very powerful indoor light like thousand watt five thousand watt ah let me tell you this? with this solar panel yeah <clears throat> so i used to uh, have a 300 watt halogen lamp in my 300. basement okay if you got close enough the hair in my knuckles would would burn <laughs> like when's playing got like like yeah you know an inch or so away like it was right. painful you did not mm-hmm. want to be there it's a halogen lamp it's really bright but good god is it hot yeah um hot. so i would take a motor with attached to a solar panel like this and i'd have to be basically touching the light wow. for it to trigger that motor uh Versus outside, the sun being 96 million miles away, give or take a few million based on the time of the year because we're in elliptical orbit. That's right, science teacher. Um, I like pointing that out. Elliptical orbit. Ah. Um, thanks, Pete, for the sound effect. Uh, <laughs> you need to have sunlight. It's just it's, there's no there's no substitution. Now, you can sometimes get like a really strong, like super strong, like 10-watt LED like flashlight or something. You hold it right there. It might get an LED mm. going, but it's just – you're better off just walking outside in the sun. That's the problem. You really need sunlight. We have some, these are LED lights we have here, uh, lighting the studio, and not not great for that. Now, now, Josh, you said 300 watts, but what about like a Mole Richardson at like 1K or even like a big mole at like 5K, you know, studio lights for film production? Would, would oh, that, I don't know, man. We can talk to Ben, maybe. That made a studio lights. Now, Josh, we've got another question here. Remember that you talked about that covering. Uh, see, I didn't have to because the back of the solar panel to. has those couple little. I'm using the silver spots on the ends, yep. and those are uncovered. Those are you don't have to. Yeah, that's just basically it's basically solder. The copper ones, you yeah, deal it's with. the copper yeah, spots yeah, yeah. you have to to do off because they have that enamel on there. Yeah, um, even if you took like a multimeter to here, you would have a hard time getting a reading yeah, because scratch of the, through it. Yeah, yeah, just you gotta. I wonder can I even do it with this. No, I need like a yeah. little coin. Little Who carries a coin in their pocket these days? Oh. I gave Andy my only quarter. People who I are parking their Flip. cars? I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, it's all credit cards now it downtown is, yeah. Milwaukee. It's all Bitcoins just to park Oh, yeah, Bitcoins. Nowadays. You know, you, you pay in the morning, and then they charge you more in the afternoon because Bitcoin dropped and again. all your Bitcoins are gone. No, my Bitcoins, <laughs> they weren't real anyway. I had one of flash drive, but uh, they went to the wash. No. Uh, all right. So this is, by the way, as horrible as this kind of looks on this table, this will work. I take it outside. I've got my positive line coming here, negative coming here. My double sides, the, the tape here, yeah. the sticky side, um, connecting the two on the silver spots. As long as I line things up and don't have any weird like shorts because of how badly I put it together, which is why you want to use the template on our website. I mean, you know what? That looks like a postmodern sculpture to me, sort of. It's pretty cool. Look, I am Picasso. The angles are bad cool. Circuits. Yeah, I like the angles. It's, it's a nice. self-portrait. Um, so at this point, we go outside and blink, blink, blink. It's going to start blinking if you're in, in the sunlight. Another fun factoid: don't go through a window. Uh, no. We as Asian now and then a teacher calls me like it's not working through a window. No. A lot of windows have UV treatments on them, yep. and that does cut out a bit of the solar energy, yeah. which will be enough to make a lot of these things not work. I always tell them, open the window. Open the window, put your hand out there. 90 out of 100 times, that fixes things. Uh, but it's kind of funny. Uh, in the last 10 years, as windows get replaced in schools, where people can't use their products. can't open them anymore. I couldn't open it in my classroom. Like yeah. It's boiling in here. We have no AC, and I can't open that window. No, safety. <sighs> safety <sighs> first, Pete. <laughs> uh, but you do that. Same thing with this panel. You could do it with... With this guy, you could get a couple LEDs going with here in parallel. Mm-hmm. Um, hook up a little motor with the fans. Always a good when you get sometimes get like Ooh. little tiny, fairly efficient motors. Um, they have no torque behind them. We used to have a bunch of those in some of the kits we used to have. But just super cheap little hobby motor with a cheap little plastic fan. It just spun up. Like, there's no energy behind it. Just spun really easily, and that would go off of a little solar panel like this or like this for sure. We use like a little four volt panel in between the two of these. Um, but that's basically it for solar energy on paper yeah. circuits. Add this to lots of different things. Years ago, I saw somebody make a really awesome like solar flower, but they had several leaves on this. It was a metal frame, several leaves, and each of those little panels, uh, leaves were one of these panels hooked together to give oh. something like six volts at like 50 milliamp. And the goal was to charge ah. a cell phone. And at that output, 50 milliamps, yeah. you're going to be charging your cell phone for weeks. Yeah. Weeks before it gets from zero to 100. <laughs> it's not even enough to even get your phone going. Um, it, but the 
point was it was interesting. It was a proof of concept. It was art as much as that. And I think they just ended yeah. up playing, putting some LEDs in there. Sorry, yeah, my, my dog is licking <laughs> horribly. I just fine. dogs it's fine. fine. People coming and going. Dogs licking themselves. <sighs> uh, but that's it. Solar stuff. Solar is really easy on paper circuits. It really yeah. is with uh, maker tape. Using little solar panels like this are cheap and easy. They're hard for kids to break. They work well. And with maker tape, you can just peel the tape off and use it for a different project later. Um, but even just say putting a panel like this stuck to a window and running tape from the back of your window, do 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 do, down to a project below, oh. super easy to do as long as your windows accommodate that or, yeah. you know, running some wires in from something. But there's so many different little projects you can do with a couple bucks worth of solar panels or mm -hmm. buying a bunch of cheap ones on eBay and waiting a while and doing some weird stuff from it. You're a good dog. You're, you're a good video production dog. Good video yeah, production my dog. My arm's all wet. But okay. Yeah, my leg's getting there, too. He yeah, loves okay. to lick. Yep. So anyway, any questions, let us know on this kind of stuff. We have templates and guides and directions. Our new solar bug kit will be up on our website once my dog is done licking us in the video room. Ah, the downside <laughs> to having an office dog. They just love to hang out with you. Indeed. But we'll have these up on our website here in like an hour or less. That's got to get that post and finished. As a product, but anywho, uh, yeah. solar is a great thing to do. I always recommend it, especially in the paper circuits aspect, just because of how simple it is and how yep. versatile you can do stuff like this. Now, you get a big enough panel, you could power an Arduino, a micro bit. Um, we have some six volt, 200 milliamp solar panels. So, like, say two of those together would give you six volt at 200 milliamp. Uh, three of them together, you basically have a watt of power. I'm doing my math correctly on that one, about a watt. I think so, yeah. USB typically minimum is uh, five volt at 500 milliamp. Yeah. So you probably want three of those six volt 200 panels or buy, <laughs> buy a bigger panel. Problem is after a certain point, they get weirdly expensive. And, Gosh, uh, sorry, one more yeah, comment here. So um, can you run those panels to laminate or to yep. kind of get protect them? And there are tons of good projects on instructables.com. We, we've had a bunch of stuff yeah. of ours posted on there for solar power. There's a bunch of different ways of doing um, panels. I'm pretty sure if I know that guy, uh, I remember that instructable. He just took some finished panels like this. I think they're 4.5 volt CIS solar panels. I know because mm -hmm. we used to carry those on our website. Uh, we they're secondhand stock, um, but they worked really well. You just put a bunch of these through a laminator. Yeah, I mean that works. Although, I hate to say, you can buy like for twenty dollars a USB folding solar panel on Amazon. Yeah. That'll put out an amp of power, amp and a half of power at five right. volts with a little bit of regulation on it. Mm -hmm. For 20 bucks, it's yep. hard to actually to buy that much solar panel off of Amazon for hobby uses for $20. Yeah. It's one of those weird situations. Mass production is cheaper than the, the, the small parts involved. Um, so I always tell people if you want to build bigger solar panels for special USB charging or stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know, it's just better off buying a cheap commercial folding solar panel yeah. just save you so much money give you a lot more output and you always want more solar energy than you think i they think yeah. the uh the rule for solar panels is you want one and a half times the power you actually need so mm. you need 10 volt uh 10 amps of power you want to build a system that's 15 amps yeah that's why any 12 volt solar panel you buy for uh putting on a house or in a system is actually rated 18 volts mm. because that way if the sun dips down in power throughout the yeah. day you're still above that threshold and even some systems where they'll go up to 24 volts for a 12 volt system just to get, prolong that extra hour mm. um, between the morning and the evening of solar energy. Yeah. So those folding solar panels, we would know we, we produced a couple back in the day, yeah. which we don't need more because that market is really tough. <laughs> uh, and the margins are like this big. Yeah. But uh, buying one of those panel uh, folding solar panels is a good way of, of just getting something to power bigger projects like an Arduino. Yeah. Um, or even <laughs> taking them apart for the solar panels in them. Mm -hmm. uh, or just if you're lucky enough, finding like a six volt, um, half an amp solar panel, like a yeah. one watt panel somewhere. But watch out, because yeah, solar prices, people still gouge for little solar panels. Yeah. They just really do gouge um, for some of these. And then they never pay more than $5 for a small panel. Yeah. Um, uh, although I think our six volt 200 is actually $6 on our website. Uh oh. No, uh, <laughs> It just depends on your needs, and maybe these are great because they're indestructible. And I do know on uh, education websites they have some of the I almost call them like the Radio Shack ones because I used to see them at Radio oh, Shack yeah. when I was a kid, I've had those. like twenty five years ago. Yeah. Um, 
they yeah they like have like a plastic body then with wires coming off of there you can still find them there's the exact same solar panels at the exact same price point they're way overpriced some teaching catalogs we work with sell them um but yeah solar is cheap it's easy just gotta look around a little bit ebay amazon um ask us email us if you have questions about solar panels like uh, yeah. i answer these two or three emails a week about i want to do this i'm like here are the resources on instructables yeah on other websites here we don't carry that here's where you want to buy it from mm -hmm. but it's surprisingly simple to do and great for kids because it demystifies it because funny enough uh edison yep. had solar That's, energy wow. back in the day he treated copper with certain chemicals produced a voltaic output from sunlight i have an huh. old um 1950s uh popular science i have a bunch of old popular science i got a garage sale i think it's 50s has like a how to build a solar powered radio oh yeah with these wow. little tiny solar cells huh. that were Surprisingly you know, expensive for the day, but yeah. little little tiny cells you hooked a bunch together to get a small functional, I think, crystal radio esque type oh, project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it existed. It, it's been around for for well over a hundred years. Uh, yeah. How to make it work? It's just getting the efficiency and the price point mm -hmm. to where it's actually useful. Yeah. Um, I think these guys are maybe like fifteen to eighteen percent efficient okay. of converting solar energy. The newer ones. They're kind of getting like to 20 to 30 in there. I think the, I mean, the higher you get, the the more power you can generate per square inch. And that's kind of thing because that's why folding solar panels for camping yeah. are so big because you need a lot of physical Unfold. real estate. Yeah. A couple, basically a couple eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper worth of solar panels to generate enough for a cell phone, or at least yeah. reliably, uh, which is a lot of physical real estate. Uh, not like we're lacking that in, in the U.S. That's why we have South Dakota. <laughs> nothing, nothing there, but corn. Oh boy, used to live there. Never, never go to South Dakota. No, Sioux Falls. Oh yes. Anyway, questions, email us because we do like to talk about solar. I will chat your ear off. I will tell you how to run a solar science fair project because we've done that enough over the years. Follow us on these sources because we like when people follow us. That's and right. We're, we don't do a lot of social media. We we we're not super big on like like showing things off or like trying to sell things. It's just like, check out these cool things we did. Here's the cool directions. Use the stuff you have already or use our stuff. We try to be pretty, pretty cool. Or just like, hey, someone sent us cool conductive Velcro. Yeah. Check it out. And sometimes other people do cool stuff with our things and then they, oh, yeah. they share them too. We'll share them we out. We do. But, uh, uh, Alex yeah, Blow yeah. from uh, Hackster.io used yeah. a bunch of our maker tape for a really cool like robot on her shoulder project, Companion which is bot. really yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Um, we shared that recently. So yeah, people share stuff. We, we, yeah, we're trying on social media a little more than we used to. <laughs> Josh, what tomorrow is Thursday. What do we got planned? Are, should we have Maker Block on as, as if a you guest want, or something? If they want to come on, hang out. See, maybe have Maker a Dr. Block Pepper. Come on. <laughs> Ooh, now with more brick. <laughs> Thanks, green screen. We have to print a label, a different color to stick on there, maybe. Mm. Wow. That's... If I do that, people will think it's something else. <laughs> Why is there a weird label around Let's his Let's just his print a, a green – put a green piece of paper around it. I just need a mug. I need a mug like, oh, it's clearly <laughs> Dr. Pepper or another type of soda. Hey, look at that green screen. Look at that. That's it pretty... looks like your can's empty. You must have drank it all. <laughs> oh, that's one of those new – oh. <laughs> okay. All, all right, right. Well, On that note, I'm going to go do paperwork. But okay. Hey, <laughs> any qu people have questions, let us know. We're around. We like doing fun solar projects, amongst other things. All these things are free on brand.gadgets.com, directions-wise. If you want to get some maker tape, we have it there. And on Amazon, our new solar bug will be available as of this afternoon for yeah. sale. Four pack <coughs> for $25. Excellent. They fun. They vibrate. They have little vibrating caster eyes on the bottom. <laughs> They're fun. Everything you need in the box. All right. Except scissors. Well, you, you probably have those, hopefully. Well, I hope people have their own scissors. Yeah. I, if you don't, I'm, I'm sorry. I can <laughs> I can recommend some really cheap Amazon ones. All right. They're pretty basic. Okay. Should we do the credits? Let's, let's get out of here. Let's All right. Roll credits. Here we go. Bye, All everybody. right. Boom. Thanks for watching. Please visit brownedoggadgets.com for parts, projects, and curriculum. Follow us on social media at browndoggadgets. Check out our live streams at Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. We'll see you next time.